so this is a look. <laughs> keep laughing and my eye patches keep slipping down. I was a bridesmaid this weekend at one of my best friends' weddings, like matching tattoo best friends. And um, yeah, it was such an amazing weekend. And I actually did my makeup, obviously, for the ceremony. And I did her makeup as well. So I thought I would share my tips with you for like a long lasting event makeup, bridesmaids makeup, bridal makeup, wedding guest makeup, if you have any of the following, like delete appropriate. Do you have any of those coming up in the following months? Here is a look that I really love for any of those occasions. Um, and I really wanted the look to be like this glass skin, super dewy, radiant, glowy, but obviously long lasting. The ceremony started at one and the dance floor closed at midnight. So that is like a long, old day to get through. So I'm gonna share with you my tips for that, especially if you're a dehydrated gal or guy. I've got some tips up my sleeve for you that I will be sharing. Um, but yeah, let's get on with this and explain, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, because I am so darn dry, we're talking like sandpaper dry, I like to make sure that my skin is correctly prepped for any kind of long lasting makeup. Um, also, apologies for my voice, I haven't been very well. I'm not well. Um, I've got really dehydrated skin, so any kind of long lasting makeup that I do, I really like to focus on the skin prep. Because long lasting makeup ultimately is gonna involve some kind of heftier formulas, more pigment, and also a little bit of powder, which is something that I never normally wear. So I'm very into the skin prep. Hence, this, which is the Tatcha Violet C Radiance Mask. And then also, oh yeah, this is Tatcha as well. The Luminous Deep Hydration Revitalizing Eye Mask. I bought these online when I bought this, because I'd used these years ago and really, really liked them. I think for an under eye mask, they actually, they do something. They're extremely like, moist. These are pricey. This is also quite pricey, but if you want a good dupe for the Tatcha uh, under eye things, the Peter Thomas Roth Hyaluronic Cloud Hydrogel Eye Patches are fab, because you actually get 30 pairs in here. Um, I've gone through probably about half of them and I just keep them in my fridge and they feel like heaven. <laughs> what is going on? I've had these on for about half an hour so I'm just gonna take these off. I've had the mask on for probably a little bit more than 15 minutes um, but this is what I did this weekend and it's also what I did on the bride as well and I love this mask because it doesn't feel too heavy and too like moisture sucking. Um, it's really radiance boosting, but my skin isn't like super bright red underneath, which can happen sometimes with masks. Um, so now I'm just gonna remove this and then we can get on to skincare. But I really wanted to show you this because I think it's a very, very important step, especially in like bridal makeup. You wanna look really fresh, you wanna look glowy, you really need the best base that you can have. I haven't toweled off my skin at all. I had an emergency towel here, just in case things got messy, but we're cool. Um, just to keep that moisture on the skin and then I'm gonna not talk and spray. The Josh Rosebrook Hydrating Accelerator Moisturizing Facial Mist. The best facial mist. If you saw my Instagram stories the other day, you would have seen that I repurchased three of these. Um, pricey, yes, but it is just, it's the best, it's the best. Uh, under my eyes and going in with the Drunk Elephant C Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream. Um, I feel like eye cream for me is a really important step when I'm doing this kind of makeup. It was a really important step on my friend as well. We both have quite dry under eyes and if you're trying to put a quite long lasting concealer, over a dry under eye, like you, you, you're just gonna look so crepey and like pancakey under your eye. So make sure there's lots of moisture going on there. Uh, then for serum, I'm back on the Drunk Elephant B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. Um, I have been using the SkinCeuticals. I've got a Dr. Jart one that I'm using up, the Glossier one that I'm kind of constantly using up, but nothing compared to this, like this mixes with the vitamin C and their glycolic so well, like nothing mixes quite like this, so I'm just putting that all over. Let's get a bit of hydration going on. The final step, um, obviously if you're gonna be outside all day or for like long periods of the day, throw on an SPF like usual. We weren't, we went outside, it was like 12 degrees, so we like sat in the cold, watched them get married, and then we came inside and spent the rest of the day toasty and nice and warm inside. So I just used this on me and also this on my friend. It's the Walida Skin Food Light. Um, like I said, we were both dehydrated, and this is such a nice, oh my god, how much have I used? It's a rich moisturizer that doesn't feel greasy 
on the skin, reacts really nicely with makeup. And if we're doing this whole glass skin look, I feel like it's worth taking your time at this step and really working products into the skin using really emollient textures. Like you want your skin to naturally have that sheen before you've even put makeup on it. Skin prep is done. I forgot to mention actually right at the beginning when I had the face mask and the slippy down eye masks on, I also had on the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Glaze. You're going to be doing some kissing if you're a bride. And even if not, you just want your lips to look juicy. Um, so prep them then so they're all good for like whatever lips that you're going to put on later. So on to primer and I've got three options here for sort of different situations. I think I know which one I'm going to go for. Um, I've got the Milk Makeup Hydrating Oil. If you are really, 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 really dry, this could be a good time to use a product like this. It does what it says on the tin and it's very, very slippy. So you could use this instead of the Wear Leader maybe, or you could use them both if you really need hydration. I'm torn between the VDL Lumi Layer Primer, which I've spoken about before. It's a Katie Jane Hughes favorite. It has like a bluey, pinky, lilac, iridescent shift to it. It makes your skin look incredible. Or the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter is a good option if you want that glow but maybe you don't want something as glass looking, as intense looking and you also fancy a little bit of coverage out of your primer. I think I'm going to go with the VDL Lumi Layer Glow and I'm going to put one pump on the back of my hand and then just blend it over my face with a Zoeva 125 stippling brush, focusing it first on those areas where you would naturally put your highlighter to sort of give that area a head start. But you can see, we're looking glowy, that's good. Sorry, quick break, uh, Meghan and Harry's baby has been revealed to the world. Oh my word, he is adorable. So for my foundation on the day, I used the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in the shade number four. It's what I used on my wedding day, it's what I use for like any big occasion moments where I need coverage and I need it to last. Obviously, I love that it cosmetics your skin CC cream, but sometimes you just want something with a little bit more like, it's gonna get you over the finish line. I'm just gonna take one pump of that and actually a swipe of the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter and then kind of mix them together. And it just gives the Giorgio Armani like a little, little bit mm, something, you know? So this was my third time being a bridesmaid, um, like second time as an adult. My first time was when I was like two, uh, so I don't really remember that. And it was so amazing to like be there for my friend, be there when like she was getting ready and stuff. Um, but does anyone else find like walking down an aisle just the most terrifying <laughs> thing? Um, I actually had a really small wedding. Uh, I'll link mine and Mark's like wedding video up there um, for many, many reasons, but partly because I was like, I, I can't, I can't bear the thought of like walking down an aisle and a hundred of my closest friends and family looking back at me like that is no, 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 no. So um, yeah, that bit was a bit of a blur and we had to walk really far. It was like a really long aisle and part of it was like over grass and then part of it was this carpet that had been laid over the grass and I was so close to falling over, so close. And there was a videographer, so there probably is footage of that moment and um, I sort of had to style it out and yeah. But yeah, does anyone else find that terrifying? Just me? Okay. So for my under eyes and for my friend's under eyes, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. Um, I'd normally be the shade three in this, but I'm currently packing for California. That'll be the next video for you. And um, it's all sort of packed up and over there and wow, my hands are greasy. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to use the shade 4 and then I used a fluffy Zoeva brush to blend it out which again is something that I've already packed away so let's use, oh let's use this, a Bobbi Brown eye blender brush. I found myself using brushes more than I did a beauty blender um, because I just feel like sometimes the beauty blender can really like zap away that coverage which is great for when you want like a really natural barely there look but when you actually need that coverage it's a bit annoying. Uh, so I found that using brushes and sort of pressing things into the face was a preferable technique. And I'm just trying to keep this really like under the eyes and not bring it too far onto the cheeks where we've got that nice amount of glow. Onto my little friend, um, and I've got the Tarte, ooh, this is the Shape Tape Concealer. Did Lily give me this or did Alana give me this? 
Alana, I think it was you. No, she gave me a clay de poker concealer, which is also amazing. Thanks for that. Lily or Alana, whoever gave me this, thank you very much. Um, I don't use this under my eyes. Like, you know, you see people and they go under the eye, they go on the nose and they do their little do do do. But for spots, really handy. I'm gonna take some on my finger, press it onto my friend, leave it a moment. Leave it a moment just to sink in. Let's talk powder for a second whilst that sinks in. Um, I hate powder, I really don't like it at all. However, you need it in these moments, like makeup melts, you get really hot, you're dancing to take that, never forget, which is the best end of party song ever, full stop. Don't at me, I don't wanna hear it. So you really do need a powder in those situations, but because we're going for this long lasting glass skin thing, um, which is still kind of glowy, it's still sort of there, um, we're gonna amp it up with a bit of highlighter in a moment. Um, you, you, need, you need powder. I like the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Powder. This is the shade Light Plus. Um, I use this on my friend. She could have done with a medium, I reckon. We like bronze it up in the end with quite a lot of bronzer. Light Plus is a really good shade for me. And I'm just gonna take that on this brush, actually. Going back to the stippling brush, just taking off like any product that is there, but I'm just gonna dip that into here and then it's just about applying it where like you don't really want that shine it's like unwanted shine aka sort of this part here like this little teardrop part under your eye on both sides a little bit on my chin and my forehead doesn't get too greasy so i just kind of leave that and my nose i quite like a bit of nose shine so really it is just like this section here and a tiny bit over the cheek just so it's prepped for everything that you're going to add after but really 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 not a lot that sunk in a little bit so i'm just gonna push the product in aside from the fact that it actually juts out from my face i feel like that's done quite a good job of uh concealing the redness concealing the color leaving it there don't touch it when you think you got to that point where you've like blended out the product take a good close look yeah it's cool we leave it we'll set it now um so just taking that stippling brush and a bit of the MAC powder, I kind of take off the excess in the lid and then just dusting it under the eye and then a tiny, tiny, tiny bit over my cheeks. If you are the bride, like if you are the star of the show, you're gonna want a little bit more. Like all lights and camera and everything is, everyone's looking at you, everyone is looking at you. Um, whereas for me, no one was looking at me, no one cared. Well, Mark was looking at me when I walked down the aisle, that was really sweet. I was like walking down and I hadn't like seen him yet because I've been getting ready with the bride all morning and I, I was like praying that he'd got there on time and he was at the back row so like when everyone was turned around like watching us come down I saw him immediately and they were playing like the, the song you know like it was like a string quartet playing the bridal song and then I saw him and that was like making me want to cry because I was just like he's the best. The end. No, don't, don't, don't go away just yet. <laughs> In fact, let me um, do the thing. Oh, wrong way. Why do I always go the wrong way? On to contour, contour, contour. I used the sculpting powder in Medium by Kevin Aquan on both of us, taking that on my Charlotte Tilbury brush. I feel like cheek colour in general can get really washed out in photos and I was very mindful of that, especially when I was doing the bride's makeup and I probably went like a little bit heavier than like my personal taste of like where I would leave it and making it look quite natural. So I feel like if you are going to be in photography, it is worth just kind of taking your cheek colour in particular from sort of a 100% to like 110, just like a little bit extra don't be afraid of just a little dialing up a notch so normally i would go for like the chanel tan de soleil like maybe the milk cream bronzer cream bronzers ugh, when you want like a really 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 long lasting makeup i don't feel like they are the one so i actually went for the nars laguna bronzer took it on a zoeva 90 Lux grand powder brush blended that in i've been used to working with creams for so long now it's been such a long time since I used a powder bronzer that I was like, whoa, pigment. You get pigment so quickly. Um, so now I'm just gonna work on this section of my body and uh, sort this out. Do the same if you have any skin exposed. Now is your time. I've put a fair amount of product onto my face and now it's time to get that <coughs> powder. It's time to get that glassiness back to the skin. So my first step would be to like, use your hands, they're warm, they're such a good tool for sort of melting and meshing things together. Just make sure everything is pressed in, nothing is settled into fine lines. Use your hands to like 
warm up your face. It sort of speeds up that natural oils process. You can see if you need to add powder anywhere else and you kind of start to get that glow back. That's fab. Um, I really like a stick cream highlighter. This is from Glossier. This is the Halo Scope in Quartz. If that isn't your style, um, if you're not as dry as I am, something like the Fort de France highlighter from NARS is lovely. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palettes, um, these are wonderful as well. I actually use this loads on the bride. Um, she's really into blush, and so she was loving these colours. She was really into like these highlights, like she wanted more highlights. She was like, more highlight, more highlight. Um, if you do get roped into doing a friend's makeup, but you don't normally do makeup, I would say like it's a collaborative process so like at every single point I showed the bride her makeup I didn't want to do this like grand reveal at the end and her be like I wish you put more base on me I need more blush I hate my eyeshadow it was very much after each step we sort of did something and then I was like how do you like it do you want more do you want less I can take away I can add um, do you want more colour like it was very much a collaborative thing and I think that worked really well I think she was quite happy with it at the end which is great and I just find that powders on me really highlight texture that I've got going on um, I'm still going to use a cream highlighter I ended up going for the Halo Scope Glossier over like my Chanel one and over the Becca one that I've got because this has a bit of pigment in it whereas those are like a sheer glossy balm this actually does have shimmer in it um, so I thought this would be a nice one if we're really going glossy glossy skin so applying that onto my cheekbones really pressing that in a little bit on the chin a little bit on the end of my nose a tiny bit above my eyebrows um, I'm gonna prime my lids and then I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see what we're working with here I'd be extremely grateful if you could ignore my eyebrows I know that some of you hate them I know that some of you love to tell me that you hate them <laughs> But I am regrowing them. They should be better than the other video. Um, I popped up a Waitrose Wants a video on Wednesday, and I think the top comment was number one that I sound like a robot in the intro. So I tried. I didn't do my normal thing. Did you notice? I didn't do my normal intro today. So hopefully less robotic. And um, the other comment was like eyebrows question mark, and then like an emoji that was like. Um, yeah, I'm regrowing them. I recorded that video the day before. I was due to see my threading lady and I hadn't done anything to my eyebrows in about six weeks. So yeah, I knew, trust me, I don't know. I, I knew they looked really, really bad. So thanks for pointing that out. We're, we're getting somewhere with them, which is very exciting. Um, the eyeshadows that I used on both me and the bride actually come from this palette. It's from NARS, it's the Skin Deep Eye Palette. If you watched my declutter that I did as part of the daily edit, you would have seen that I got rid of this eyeshadow palette, but actually I didn't. It was the one thing, I got to the end of that video and I was like putting everything in the giveaway piles. This was the one thing that I recovered. I was just like, I feel like I haven't given this enough of a shot. I also kept it because I thought it would be really good for my friend's makeup, but I used it and I was like, oh, I really like it. I really, yeah. Yeah, so I just need to issue a retraction on that. Um, but I ended up using sort of different shades on the two of us. Um, I think for her, we went for more of this like pinky rose gold shade. On me, I used more of this golden, but we both used this in the crease. And then we both used this shade and this shade as like a eyeliner shader along the lash line and a little bit under the eyes as well. So I'm gonna take this one here, which is basically like a contour for your eye. I'm taking it on a Zoeva 228 Luxe Crease Brush and I'm just gonna blend that. But yeah, I thought it was funny. I was like, I can't believe I'm using this palette really liking it. This eye all of a sudden is just like drooped down. It's like, okay, we're hooded now. Uh, so definitely like looking sort of straight at my mirror and just making sure that you can still see that definition even when I've got my eyes open. And then on the lids, I used this shade here, this more like golden peachy shade, a little bit MAC, all the glittersy actually. And I used it on a fluffy brush. You'd think you'd need a flat brush for this. But actually, you really, you really don't. Then this is a nice shade for us brunettes, and my friend is a blonde, so she looked really nice in that slightly pinkier shade, which is just a case of like blending out, getting to a point that you're happy at. I personally feel happy with that. Um, on her, I definitely added a bit more pigment, went back and forth a couple more times, uh, and then I was going in this matte brown and this matte brown to create a shade to use as a bit of an eyeliner just on that outer corner. My friend wanted an actual liner so I used the Pat McGrath one 
it was lovely. I really liked using it actually, and I'm terrible at eyeliner. Um, I'm really pleased we got that bit done before like the videographer came into the room and the photographer and the florist and everyone was in the room and that would have been kind of terrifying to have like a full on audience. Top tip, do your eyeliner when no one's looking. For the bride, I did put a little bit of the shimmery shade kind of under the eyes. I used the deeper shade in the corner to kind of make a slightly elongated eye that look really nice with, like when you have lashes on top. And I also took the NARS highlighter and use that on her inner corner, like she really wanted like a really shimmery inner corner, so we did that. Um, but for me, I'm gonna leave it there. I, I don't really ever feel too much of a need to put stuff under the eye, so I'm just gonna go in with a shed load of the Lancome Miss Your Big Waterproof Mascara. Thank you very much. Mascara on, it's time for brows, and I didn't do my soap brow technique because I thought it's a very trend thing that I'm currently doing and you know these are my friends wedding photos that she's gonna have for years and years and years to come and um, yeah if I've got my crazy kind of brushed up brows could be a bit of a look um, so I basically just filled them in with the IT Cosmetics brow power in the shade Universal Taupe. Now Universal Taupe I find it interesting that they only do one shade in this product anyway they do have a different product that they have more shades available in um, but I have to say I used it on my brows and then I used it on my friend's brows, uh, and she's blondie, and um, it looked pretty good on the two of us. So all I was doing here and all I did for hers was kind of filling gaps. Um, I've got like a little bit, I'm obviously quite gappy at the front where I'm trying to regrow things. Um, so yeah, I was just kind of filling in there. I've got a bit of a gap just there as well. So I didn't want anything too mad. My brows are obviously gigantic at the moment. Um, and yeah, I just didn't want to, just, just a little a little tidy up. So zooming you back out for the final few steps, um, lip colour. My friend used Modesty from MAC as her wedding day lipstick. Uh, I used Chanel Rouge Coco lipstick in Adrienne as my wedding day lipstick. Um, but I really like the Revlon Super Lustrous lipstick in Bare Affair. I mentioned this in my drugstore video. I will link that up there for you. And I think it just went really nicely. It created kind of a very tonal look, it went really nicely with the dress that we were wearing. It just felt wrong without earrings, but that is the finished look. Um, everything will be linked down below for you that I've used, but obviously things can be kind of subbed in, taken out, taken up a notch, taken down a notch, depending on you, your skin type, your preferences, but I thought it'd be a good one to share. I felt really good in this makeup, and like I said, the adjustments that I made for the bride looked incredible. She looked so, so, so good on her wedding day. It was a very lovely, beautiful, emotional weekend. Um, but like I said, my packing video will be coming your way on Wednesday before my first California vlog. I can't wait. I'm excited for this packing video because I've managed to fit all of my skincare, makeup, body care, and hair care into one amazing pouch. I feel like it's just like a it's got superpowers. It's incredible. So I cannot wait to share that with you. I will see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye.